Renault Zoe accounts for one in five European EV sales and in this updated ZE50 battery form now goes further in its efforts to persuade super mini buyers of its all electric virtues. 245 WLTP rated miles to be exact. A more powerful 100 kilowatt R135 motor delivers stronger acceleration, plus there's a smarter look both for the exterior and the cabin. If you've always liked the thought of an all-electric supermini but needed more convincing to buy one, Renault hopes that what's on offer here will be enough to make you think again. If you've tried an earlier version of this Zoe, uh, as is quite possible given it's been on sale for close to a decade, you should find that this much improved ZE50 battery version to be quite a lot more rapid, or at least you will if you get yourself one with the much improved 100 kilowatt R135 electric motor. The previous 80 kilowatt uh, R110 motor still continues on lower down the range, and in the LCV version of this model, the Zoe Van too. In preferable R135 form though, this Zoe feels a properly modern, sprightly EV, making 30 miles an hour in 3.6 seconds, while 60 is crested in 9.5 seconds, and a plump 245 newton meter torque figure ensures that this Renault can now hold its own in faster traffic in a way that previous versions struggled to do. The 87 miles an hour top speed is inevitably a lot less impressive, but this Renault does charge up towards it with a level of zeal that will decimate the WLTP rated 245 mile driving range. That's a 30% improvement over the previous 40 kilowatt hour battery pack. You can maximize frugality by regularly activating the provided eco meter and that restricts throttle output and by selecting the extra B setting now provided for the single speed auto gearbox that maximizes regenerative energy harvesting, uh, enhancing engine braking so much that you'll hardly ever need to use the brake. Refinement is superb, uh, ride quality is a little less so, although it does improve at highway speeds. Handling, while well, that's geared to comfort and urban use, you won't want to be throwing this thing around very much uh, around the country lanes at higher speeds, despite the notably low center of gravity enabled by the heavy battery. Charging from the seven kilowatt wall box that Renault includes in the price of the car takes nine hours and 25 minutes, uh, which would set you back around seven pounds on most household electricity tariffs. Uh, to give you some perspective on that, a typical petrol powered super mini of the same size would use 27 pounds worth of fuel to cover this Zoe's 245 mile operating range. A typical 22 kilowatt public charging point would charge the car in three hours. If you specify this car with the 50 kilowatt onboard DC charger, you'll be able to use one of the DC 50 kilowatt quick charge public points now springing up on major routes, in which case an 80% charge from empty would take just an hour and 10 minutes. Other running cost benefits, well, those are common to all compact EVs. So in running one of these, you'll be exempt from the London congestion charge and also from the ultra low emission zone charge. Plus you won't pay any VED road tax and company car users will incur zero benefiting kind taxation in year one of ownership. There's a balance needed with EV design. Choosing all electric motoring is radical enough without having to be faced with wild and wacky styling that marks you out on the high street as an extravagant early adopter. But delivering something dull doesn't really fit with the whole future orientated zero emissions ethos. Renault has already tried both approaches with the extreme twizzy urban runabout and the uber conservative Fluence ZE, but with this Zoe, they managed to get the approach just right back in 2012, rejecting futuristic early design sketches in favor of a smart, and very stylish look penned by Spanish designer Jean Semariva. Outwardly, not much has changed with this ZE50 model over that original car. Uh, not much needed to. We'd still argue that this is the prettiest thing the company makes. Uh, the differences here, such as they are, mainly feature at the front. Uh, now, most noticeable, if you know that earlier model, will be the replacement of the original tick-shaped 
curved corner dimpled daytime running light creases in favour of these large events uh, modelled on those used by the latest Clio. Uh, this lower grille that's also larger to better emphasise the width of the car and with top GT line trim you get chrome stamping. And the headlamps there freshly framed by Renault's signature C-shaped daytime running lights and they now feature full LED beams offering 75% more light. Uh, the familiar big central Renault badge which now gets a 3D finish continues to double as a charging port and it flips open to reveal both the Type 2 AC plug and where fitted the connector for this revised model's new 50 kilowatt DC fast charger. So it looks the part outside, let's activate this hands-free keycard and check out what it's like indoors. Well, the new single colour dash has been completely redesigned with this central horizontal strip to emphasise its width. Plus there are upgraded soft touch materials and lots of smart metallic highlights. The three-spoke wheel now also looks far more appealing, as does the more usable, squarer, 10-inch TFT instrument binnacle screen you view through it. A further EasyLink infotainment screen lies on this floating centre dash panel, 7 inches in size on the mainstream models, or as here, 9.3 inches with this top variant. Inevitably, because the battery pack is mounted beneath the front and rear seats, you have to sit fairly high up in this car, which is why, unfortunately, it's still not possible to have a height-adjustable driver's seat. Still, the wheel has enough adjustment for reach and rake to ensure that most will be able to find an acceptable driving position. Nice touches include the beautifully finished gear shifter and the silver door pulls, uh, while from mid-range trim upwards, the seat upholstery is made from 100% recyclable material, apparently including old Renault seat belts, and on this top variant, it features part synthetic leather trim. So let's take a look at the rear. Once inside, you'll find more room than most Super Minis can offer, and vastly more than you get in either an E208 or a Corsa E. It's a bit more spacious than it is in the back of a Clio 2, even though this Zoe shares that car's same wheelbase length. Look up and you'll find that headroom's excellent too, at which point you might notice that the ceiling panel here has been imprinted with a circuit diagram to go with the whole electrified theme. Uh, most models get two centrally mounted USB ports back here too. Let's finish with a look at the boot. Now the boot of a Super Mini EV ought to be bigger than that of a combustion engine model. After all, battery powered cars sit on a chassis uh, that would normally have to package in the fuel tank and a bulky internal combustion engine. Uh, that's all space that in an EV is more compactly occupied by an electric motor and by a set of batteries. So it's a bit disappointing to find that the 338 litre capacity uh, of this trunk is 53 litres less than what you get in the shorter Clio. Still, it is around 30 litres more than you get in those E208 and Corsa E direct rivals we mentioned earlier, so that is some compensation. In summary, the Zoe pushes the EV revolution on a further stage, but we're still not quite at the point of mass acceptance here. That won't happen until prices fall, the public charging network improves and driving range figures further increase. When all that takes place, as it eventually must, Renault's EV investment gamble may yet handsomely pay off. And when that happens, the Zoe will have more than played its part.